As we discussed last time, building a high-end PC in a tiny case isn't all that complicated. However, running all of that hardware at its maximum capacity without turning your PC into an oven is another story. For this build, we anticipated thermal complications given the components involved and the volume of the case. We planned accordingly, but stress testing and benchmarking will show if our preparations were sufficient. So let's see how our brave little toaster did. Alright, I want to jump straight to the benchmarks, but I want to give a little bit of context first. So first of all, we didn't overclock the processor or the GPU. These are just as they are out of the box. We really didn't do that because there's not a whole lot of headroom involved with the 1800X and with the graphics card, it didn't do as well in the thermal department and we're a little bit worried about overclocking simply because the graphics card fans are pulling double duty, having to act as an intake for the system and also cool that GPU. So we don't want to push our luck there. We were, however, able to get the full acceleration out of the RAM, the full 3200 megahertz, which was more important to me than a whatever minor overclock we may get on the CPU. I was really excited to see the full 3200 megahertz available to us, and tests were run at about 23 to 25 degrees C, and unless otherwise noted, all tests were 1440p. I compared some of these results with results I got from my own machine, my daily machine I used to edit this video and game and whatnot, and that machine has an i7 uh, and a, a, a 6 gig 1060. So it's a decent machine, but you should be able to clearly see the difference between uh, a good machine and this machine even with the confined space that it sits in. First up, we use Prime95 to max out the thermal load on the CPU, and we were surprised to see even after 30 minutes of sitting there, it never reached any higher than 69 degrees C. We anticipated seeing some sort of thermal limit reached with this confined space and such a high-end CPU running in there, but there was no evidence of that whatsoever. That's really a testament to the cooler we used, that 240 millimeter uh, all-in-one unit that was given to us by Arctic. Retails for less than $90, and that's some pretty stellar performance for a relatively inexpensive cooler. Then we decided to look at the GPU for testing where we ran the Fermark stress test. Using the 1440p preset, it scored 6,596, a frame rate of 110, and the temperatures maxed out at 67 degrees C. That's a respectable temp given the test involved, however that was nowhere near the maximum uh, thermals that we saw in any of our testing. User benchmark was next, and in the Galaxy test it scored 499 frames per second, and that seems to be some sort of artificial limit placed on the test than a limit of the graphics card. And in the Sphere test, it scored 267.8 FPS. VR Mark was next, where it scored a 9,581 in a frame rate of almost 209 FPS. Time Spy was next up to bat, and this is a very demanding test, even for high-end hardware. Graphic score was a 9,459, scored almost 61 frames per second in the first test, 55 FPS in the second test, a CPU score of 8200, almost 8300, and the CPU test score was 27.9 FPS. Again, a very demanding test, but a very respectable score. For Fire Strike, it scored a 19434, graphic score was a 27294, a physics score of 19568, combined score of 6100. Unigen Heaven was next, and using the Extreme preset we saw some pretty impressive results. It scored a 4,024, and in the test it gave us 159.7 FPS. Unigen Value was equally impressive, in the Extreme HD preset it scored 4,617 and 110 FPS. Unigen Superposition is the newest benchmark by Unigen that's currently available for free and it's also a very demanding test. It's meant for this newer hardware. Using the 1080p Extreme preset, it scored 5,578, and the test result gave us almost 114 FPS. And this is also where we saw the maximum GPU temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. Now, all things considered, that's not that hot, but it's definitely not cold either. Um, any significant overclock or overvolting of this card uh, has the potential to bring it into some unsafe territory. The OpenGL test scored 117 FPS and Cinebench CPU scored 1,621, which is a very impressive result considering my machine struggles to get 1,000. The Geekbench CPU benchmark gave us a single core score of 4,550 and a multi-core score of 23,551. 
Now, I did do some gaming on it. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, I wasn't able to download all the games I wanted to and test them as thoroughly as I wanted, but I was able to play Doom on it, and it absolutely flew through it. Again, it was at 1440p, and it was getting around 170 to 180 FPS. Obviously, a testament to how well optimized the game is, but a testament to how awesome this hardware is. Only under explicit synthetic loads did our little machine show any signs of excessive heat. Even in those very specific scenarios, the thermals observed were easily manageable, making this more of a easy bake oven than a slow cooker. Well, if you appreciated this video, give it a thumbs up. This was a lot of fun to do, a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Again, I want to give a, a final special thanks to Silverstone for providing us with this power supply, the 650 watt uh, G power supply that we were given for the purposes of this build, and also Arctic for providing the awesome cooler to keep this machine running nice and cool. And you saw the evidence of those results in our benchmarking. And if you like the music in, in this video and also the last, the first part of this series, then go ahead and check out The Encounter who has an awesome channel um, and his social media handles, which can be found in the video description down below. And if you wanna build this machine for yourself, then go ahead and check out the video description down below where you can find my affiliate links linking to all the parts used in this machine. And make sure you check out part one if you got this far and haven't watched it. And please subscribe. I noticed that less than 1% of the views I get on my videos are subscribed. Less than 1%. So if you like this video, chances are you're gonna like the next one. And if you want to be notified when my videos are available, you're gonna have to subscribe. So do that by clicking right here. Um, and I appreciate the viewership and your likes and comments. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.